Hello my friends, John LaRuffa here with another Straight Up Solo, and in this episode we're going to look at Keystone North America, as so. I'm going to show you a little bit about the solo game, uh, campaign, I'm going to show you how it plays solo, and then hopefully this will help you understand if this is something that you're interested in, or something that you'd, you know, prefer just not to go down that, uh, that path. So let's go ahead and take a look. And as usual folks, please, if you haven't done so already, like and subscribe to my YouTube channel so I can continue to build up my fan base. All right, so this is what it looks like to set up the deluxe version of this game. And I'm just on the second solo mission here. And what I like about it is they give you a little story, which is fine, but then they really change up what you've got to do and what you've got to accomplish. So the first mission was really simple. It was kind of like beat your own or beat a specific score with most things in play. Now this one, it says that, you know, here's the setup, um, but there's a special rule if you... Basically, if you add one of these keystone cards to your player board, you've got to discard a keystone card from the field, if able. And at the end of the game, you have to have six or more on your player board. you got to at least complete one secret goal and have 70 or more points. So it starts to ratchet up the conditions a little bit. And as you go in the, uh, the book deeper and deeper, they, change, you know, they add more and more difficult things here to really, I think, make it for a very... Um, very robust solo mode because if it was just beat your own score well that would get kind of old after a while um but now we've got a nice campaign with i think 20 yeah 20 um different things in here and that really adds to the flavor so the way the game works is very simple on your turn you do one of two things you either take a card from the uh, tableau area here and if you take one that's not at the front you have to put one acorn on all the cards previously to do it. And you put that card someplace on your board here, and you're trying to do ascending or descending um, lines of numbers, okay? So, you know, one, two, three, four. If all those shared a specific common icon, like this common icon right here, you would be able to score that at the end of the game. So just giving you an example, if I had a situation like this, two, three, four, Five. this is of course just giving you an example here then these all share that um desert uh grassland kind of um icon and so i could score these one point per card one two three four plus i'd get another point for any of them that are tagged and if i had a keystone in there like i do i would double the score and another one would triple the score so that's the kind of thing you're trying to do in this game you're trying to figure out um, and I hope I'm putting these back in the right order where they were. If not, oh well. Um, you're trying to figure out how to put those things in order, but you also score, you know, your, your rows and your columns. So there's a lot of spatial, where should I put this? What do I do with that? And anytime you put down a card, you end up also, if you put it next to one that shares a common icon from the, from the left side, you will get acorns for every common icon it shares. If you don't decide to do that, you can choose to play one of these abilities. And what you do is usually you end up discarding a certain amount of cards from the display here. And then you get to take whatever it is over there and you flip it over. If you want to, you can take just one of those on your turn. But after you flipped a couple of them, you may be enticed to take any of them that are flipped. You do them all and then you move the round marker down one. So that's how the game advances. The game also ends when you completely fill up your um your tableau and you have these secret objectives here they're not secret in the solo game of course but they tell you to do four different things and if you can do all four different things you can score up to 24 points which is kind of cool so there's a lot of things kind of pushing you in different ways um and so i'll just play a couple turns oh and by the way if you want you can also buy these wild cards up here which don't have a number on them but can count from any number they want when they're scoring uh, horizontally or vertically they just cost 10 acorns so the acorns are used to buy cards deeper and to pay for these at the end of the game i think they're also worth like uh, one point for every three acorns i believe all right and then the other thing is with the game is as you get deeper into this book they do allow you to unlock these little secret chests that have a couple more cards in them so let's go for go through a couple of of turns here so starting out i mean i obviously just showed you a pretty sweet line um, so let's go ahead and get that going. So if I choose this one because of the special circumstances, I have to discard this one based on what that card said. If you choose a keystone card, you have to discard another one if able. So I do that for my first turn. That didn't cost me any acorns because 
I didn't, I picked it right from the right side. Second turn, um, I'm gonna pick up this one here. That way I can get a three. And what I'll probably do is I'll put it over here hoping for, actually I'm gonna put it over here because I wanna try to go down a little bit. And if I start with a four here, it's gonna be tough. I could go in inverse order, but that's probably not gonna be the way I go. And this is the discard pile at this point. So I'll pick that up. When I put that next to this card right here, because it shares a similar two similar icons, I can get two acorns. All right, so I'll just flip this one over into a three. Quite simple, as you can see here. Now, what I'm also trying to do is figure out how to score some of these different things. So the leaves, this these do not help me. So I'm actually looking for ones that have snowflakes on them to form um, a, uh, a little uh, L-shaped pattern or wedge that could be rotated one way or the other. I'm looking for two um, endangered species that I have to put next to each other, three to tag that are in a row, and then four anywhere on here of this icon right there. So based on all that, maybe it's a good time to start looking at making my L shape. And I think it could be kind of interesting to do that with this two over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna start, I'll put one here, I'll pick up this two, okay? Slide that down. There's the one I was hoping for. Now he's way back there. I could spend a bunch of stuff, um, but I mean, ultimately in the single player, you'll get it back as long as you don't discard it. But I think I'm gonna wait just a minute because I know I wanna put him there in a second. Um, in the meantime, I can spend another one. Oops, that was a three. Let's not do that, huh? One, two, three. Okay, and spend one right here to pick up this black tail jackrabbit. Uh, that allows me to then get one over there. We slide down, getting our this card closer. And again, I can't be laying out too many of these things without thinking about my condition. My condition being I have to get some more keystone stuff. So I want to try to get those when there are no more keystones out there, just so I don't have to compromise any cards. So maybe it makes sense to actually do that now. Um, and so why don't I do that here? I'm going to turn, turn this into a three. One two, three, four. So I can get him now, put him in here. I get one and now I have another keystone. That's two of the six that I need in order to qualify for a victory. <clears throat> so you can see how that goes. If I wanna do this, for instance, I can do that. I have um, only, I don't have any endangered species right now. This one allows you to move two things around, which when you move them, you can score what they touch. And you can move it there and back or do something like that, which is kind of interesting just to get some more um, stuff going. And these also help you, I said, sorry, acorns. These also help you discard things that you might not need. Um, but again, I think I'm gonna pick up this because I still need to work on my situation. Right now I put it in the middle. It's kind of a weird place. Like, why would you do that? Well, because I need to get at least one of these conditions over here and I'm hoping to be able to do that kind of thing with that card. So you can see this game just flies by, right? It does not take um, too much, I'd say, uh, there, well, I'll put it this way. You can get to a point where you're kind of deciding and trying to figure out where you need to put something when, but when the combinations just become, you know, a, more obvious to what you want to do, it's easier to quickly see them and, uh, you know, put them right into play. And so it doesn't take a massive amount of brain power, but it's not a simple, you know, the choice is always obvious kind of game either. Uh, all right, so let's see, let's see, see. What does this card do again? I do like the fact that they put those things right here. It says you may draw the top three cards of a species deck. If you do, you place one on an empty space in your player board, discard the other placed ones in the discard pile. So let's just for the sake of chagrins, show you what that looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to do this. So in order to do this one, I will discard these two cards so I can get this closer. Those are gone. All right, and then I have to immediately, I don't fulfill that to the end. So immediately one, two, three, I get my choice of these. And the icons that I like are the flowers because I need more flowers. I need to have at least four of those. So why don't I do this? I'll put this black willow tree right there put those in the discard, and that allows me to get one more acorn. And then I flip this over, showing that that's been used. 
and then we redeal some of these. And so you could see it really flows pretty quickly. Um, I don't need to probably go through any more. I think you get the gist of it. You're trying to solve these goals. You're trying to do the, the ascending or descending numbers. And you're also trying to uh, match up the icons because that's how everything scores. If you get the bonus things, uh, the keystone pieces there, you will double or triple your line like this with two of them in there, which could be really good, really good for scoring. You know, just so, so uh, you can kind of put these things together and really get some good strong lines. They also give you a nice, um, which is which is helpful, a nice score pad to help you just jot down all of the different, you know, all of your different rows and columns, which help uh, helps you do that, so it makes it easier. Um, so yeah, that's about the size of it. Let me go ahead and tell you what I think. All right, folks, hopefully that helps you understand what you get when you play Keystone North America solo. I think there's a lot of similar style games in the uh, game space these days out there in the field. There's, there's certainly Cascadia. There is um, the uh, um, Meadow game that have nature themes. This one is a little bit different because it shares the, um, what do I want to say? It has some of that feel of Cascadia and Meadow, but I think it's just mostly it feels like it because you're choosing things from an open place and you're putting them into your board. It does, it, this is unique on its own. It stands on its own. I think that you can easily own both of those games. I do own both those games and I see that I have a different spot in here. But my opinion is where this game really shines and Cascadia also has this, is that you have the this book of your solo missions. If you didn't have this, I think this game would get pretty stale solo pretty fast because it would just be a beat your own score and that's really not that much fun. However, with these setups here and the different conditions and the different puzzles, this is quite a nice puzzle game that is medium lightweight. The turns um, can, you know, be very quick as you saw, but there are meaningful decisions to make and it's not always obvious what you want to do because you get, you're scoring in different directions and you've got different conditions going on. And I got to imagine that as you get deeper into this book, some of the things that they have you do are just very different and help and really kind of twist your mind around how do I do that kind of um, situation. And I showed you pretty much all the mechanics. The only mechanic I don't think I showed you is when you research uh, something, you put one of these little tiles on there to, um, to add an extra point when you're going to get it, uh, when you score it. Um, and that can add things. The, um, the fact of the matter is there's a, there's a decent amount of game here. You don't have to necessarily spring for the deluxe. The only thing I like about the deluxe is it makes the colorful board, the boards more colorful. If you don't have that, you don't have that uh, neoprene tableau mat to look at and your boards will be, you know, looking like this, which is totally fine. But I, I hate to say it, I just, I like games that look pretty. I mean, or look fun, I should say. And this one looks a lot more fun like that. So it is absolutely worth it to me just to, to look at it um, and see it. And it's just a little more pleasant. So that's what you want, if you, or that's what you get if you want this kind of light medium game. If you're looking for a heavy game that's got a lot of stuff in it that's really going to break your brain puzzle-wise, I don't think this will probably deliver that. I, I don't think there's enough there to make it like, wow, I mean, uh, there's this and then this and then this. It's not that kind of game. That's okay. you got to have variety in the collection. Um, and I like these kinds of games, especially for like a Saturday afternoon um, when I'm just kind of just taking it easy and get a cup of tea or something like that or a cup of coffee sit down and play a game like this 20 20 minutes tops 30 minutes maybe set up as quick it's great for that it's not going to be the game night game where you bring every or well i should say it's not gonna be the solo game where you sit down and you're like let me devote an entire afternoon for this unless you want to go through a bunch of those solos or those scenarios maybe but i think you're getting the point of where i'm coming from so i hope that this was very helpful for you um Thanks again for watching, everybody. Really appreciate it. And whatever you play in the future, I hope you have a fantastic time doing it. Take it easy.